You're tuned in to the Dakota Housing Network on Super Talk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. In-depth discussion and analysis of real estate issues nationwide and those issues unique to our area. Our team of experts includes Joe Sheehan, Greg Larson, Dave Floor, Brian Ritter, and a great variety of guests. The Dakota Housing Network begins now on Super Talk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. And welcome to the Dakota Housing Network here on Super Talk 1270. My name is Brian Ritter. I'm the president of the Bismarck Mandan Development Association. And I'm your host today on a very chilly, very frosty Thursday morning. My guest today is Mr. Randy Bina. He is the executive director of the Bismarck Parks and Recreation Department. And he assures me that by the end of the show, he will have melted all the snow in the streets. <laughs> that is that is the kind of pull that Randy has in this community where he can literally melt the snow. I'm not sure if he, you know, he's smiling right now like he was just lying to me, but I'm going to hold him to it. We're here today. We've got, again, we've got Randy as our host. We're going to talk about Parks and Rec here, but we're going to start off today's show like we do every single month and talk about Bismarck Mandan by the numbers. There is an awful lot of good things happening here in Bismarck and Mandan. You can drive around the streets, you can drive around Bismarck, you can drive around Mandan, and you see buildings going up, steel being erected, dirt being moved, call it what you want to call it. There's a lot of activity. But it's helpful sometimes to talk about the numbers, to quantify that in numbers that don't lie. And one of the first indicators we have, and again, if you go to the organ- my organization's website at www.bmda.org, you will find a document that we produce each month called the BMDA Economy at a Glance. And the Economy at a Glance is a collection of economic indicators from all various sectors of all sectors of the economy. And the first one that we always get asked about, we always get asked about how it's going, Randy, probably no surprise, workforce. I mean, right now, Randy, would you say if you went back, I mean, let's, let's say we looked at a year now. Would you say it's easier? I mean, you've seen you. I mean, you added jobs. You guys have thousands of part-time jobs. You've got a lot of full-time jobs. Would you say it's easier to hire now than it was a year ago? Well, yes, I would, Brian. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me I today. It. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. But, um, you know, staffing is an issue for the Bismarck Parks and Recreation District. But, uh, you know, if, if I look back a year from today, I think we're f- uh, finding uh, more applicants today and more uh, better quality in our applicants. So I feel it has improved. Well, that's good. And, and I'm glad to hear that, Randy. And I think the numbers back up Randy's assertion here, because if you go back uh, to August of 2015, there were approximately 75,800 jobs in the Bismarck Mandan metropolitan area. If you go if you go forward now, um, well, go forward to September 14, 74,300 had an unemployment rate of 2.2 percent. If we go if we fast forward a year, September 15, these are the most recent numbers we have. There were 76,500 jobs in the economy, and the unemployment rate, believe it or not, has fallen to two percent. Now, it's it's incredible to think that. I mean, it's incredible to think that the unemployment rate, when we've been at, what, near zero for, I mean, for the last four or five years, it gets lower, folks. And that's a testament to the strength of the economy and employers like Parks and Rec. So it's, I'm glad to hear Randy say that you're still able to find people, still seeing applicants, because that's what we're hearing, quite frankly, from other businesses. Not to say it's still not tough, not to say that's still not you know, a very tight labor market, but I think people are adjusting. I think people are maybe changing some of their hiring practices. Would you agree with that, Randy? People are adjusting to a new market? Yes, I, I think they are, and uh, we have to do the same thing. Uh, we're looking at different ways to recruit our potential um, new hirees. Um, and we're looking at we want to remain competitive. Uh, we're always looking at our doing market assessments for pay, benefits, those types of things. But, you know, I'd like to mention, you know, I don't think the visiting or viewing listening audience uh, may know, but, you know, the size of our employer employment is um, – or employee uh, is we're, we're just under 900 part-time employees that we use uh, throughout the year. And uh, we also employ about 60 full-time employees. Wow. So we employ quite a few people um, with just, th- and that's just with the Bismarck Parks and Recreation District. And for many, uh, we employ a number of people. It's their first job. So we have to uh, get these people on and train them. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're changing a bit and we're employing, more people that are retired and just work in a few hours a week. And um, so it works for us, uh, but definitely we have to change along with the changing environment around us. Well, Randy, the Parks and Rec Department was my first job. Uh, when I was my first job, I umpired Babe Ruth baseball games. I get paid 9 bucks a game, 
if I umpired out on the base pass, but if I worked behind the plate, I got 10 bucks. That I mean, that was the wage, and I took the extra buck. <laughs> I took I took I took the heat behind the plate, but I took the ten bucks. So I'm I'm right in that I'm right in that group. Now Randy just talked about how many how many people they employ. Well, of course, when you employ that many people and we're adding as many jobs as we have, and believe it or not, folks, there are still a little over three thousand open jobs in Bismarck and Mandan right now. Well, you take all those jobs, those people they take their wages and they're spending a lot of money in our economy. And I want to point out something I think most people will find surprising. If we go back to 2014. And you took the first and second quarters, so so January all the way through June, when oil was still you know around a hundred bucks a barrel, still doing a lot better than it was right now. The total taxable sales and purchases were a little over a billion dollars for that half year. You fast forward that same period in 2015, the first six months of this year, oil is 40, 50, 35 dollars. The total that's that number is about 1.019. So we went from 1.02 to 1.019. So I think what that should tell people is that Bismarck Mandan's economy is more than just oil and gas. That is not dependent upon oil and gas. Certainly it's a nice add-on, but I think people should look at that and think, boy, the sky's not falling. $35 oil is not going to mean the end of Bismarck Mandan's economy. And we're, and we're showing that in the numbers. And so I'm very optimistic you know, what the, for what that means for us going into 2016. The other thing people always ask about is apartments. I mean, Randy, you and I drive around town and you look at where some of your facilities are. You got apartments going up all the time. I mean, they're building up right around your facilities, right around your parks, probably because your parks are there. Yes, we, we feel uh, people want to live around parks and that's the importance of uh, uh, developing neighborhood parks and the new growth areas. And we're working on that as we speak. We uh, opened a couple new neighborhood parks this year. So the reason I bring up the apartments is because uh, last month for the very first time, the Bismarck Mandan Apartment Association in partnership with North Dakota Guarantee and Title, conducted an apartment vacancy survey. I mean, it, it's a number we've been asked for a lot in the past. We've never really had a great answer. And so these two organizations, and I want to thank them as publicly as I can, uh, conducted an apartment survey, conducted a vacancy survey. So in October 2015, the vacancy rate in Bismarck Apartments, those who reported back that were built prior to 2010, so we'll call them the older stock, the vacancy rate was only 3.6%. If you take that, if you take Bismarck again, and you look at the vacancy rate for those built after 2010, it was 10 percent. Now come across the River to Mandan, again built before 2010, 2 percent. If you look after 2010, 9 percent. And the last thing I'll mention is uh, transportation. You know, Randy just got done telling me about his daughter's flying in from Scotland. She's in the air right now. Well, at the Bismarck Airport, year to date, airport passenger boardings are up from 198,000 through October of last year to over 213,000 October of this year. So we're doing very well at the Bismarck Airport. Producer Jim is telling me that we have a break coming up, and he's surprising us with a little bit of Christmas music this month. So he's, we're going to leave you. Is that the Kinks, Jim? Yep. It's the Kinks. We'll leave you here. We'll come back right after the break here on Super Talk 1270. Currently, it's 16. Super Talk 1270. Home with the Bismarck Bobcats and high school sports. Listen online or anywhere on the Radio Pub app. Super Talk 1270. And we're back here on the Dakota Housing Network, Super Talk 1270. I'm your host, Brian Ritter. My guest today, Bismarck Parks and Recreation Executive Director, Mr. Randy Bina. Randy and I were just wrapping up talking about some of the very positive economic indicators in Bismarck and Mandan, and a little bit of how it's impacting uh, Randy's operations there at Parks and Rec. But what I want to start off today's, really to start off today's show with and, and have Randy tell us more about is, you know, everyone everyone who lives in Bismarck I mean, has, imp- has been impacted or has participated in some Parks and Recreation program at some point. You can't tell me, you can't tell me there's somebody out there that hasn't been at least in one of your facilities, hasn't participated in one of your programs. Right, Randy? Someone has to at some point. They've all been through. Well, we, we hope so. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, I like to describe us as uh, we are a customer driven organization that uh, a, min- a municipal park district that provides numerous um, opportunities for our citizens and visitors. And uh, when I talk about opportunities, I talk about program opportunities, special event opportunities, parks, trails. Uh, we just provide a very uh, diversified uh menu of offerings, again, for our citizens and visitors. So, Randy, you mentioned this in the first segment, but tell us again, 
just how big in terms of people Parks and Rec is. I mean, how many employees you have? I mean, because that number really takes me back. Yes, uh, you know, we're, we're very good size. Our labor force is, uh, when you count full-time and part-time, uh, we're just under 1,000 employees. Wow. wow. In addition to that, we rely on numerous volunteers throughout the year to help uh, run po- programs uh, with Bismarck Parks and Recreation. Uh, we also get great support for any special events that we bring in. Uh, we partner with a number of agencies, a number of organizations, uh, again, to make uh, various improvements, facility improvements, park improvements. Uh, And again, they're very involved. Uh, We have some groups that are very involved in helping us attract events to our community. And for instance, in 2015, this year in August, we hosted the American Legion Central Plains Regional Baseball Tournament. Uh, Very good event. Great, uh, great positive comments that we receive from the participating teams, the officials with American Legion Baseball. what that means is we are going to have this event back again in 2016. And all of, the, all of those events are good for the community. They bring people to our community. They generate uh, sales tax dollars, et cetera. But it also provides another recreational opportunity for our citizens to attend. Now, Randy, we talked, you just talked to, got done talking about the people. But the facilities, I mean, talk about, if you can, talk a little bit about I mean, how many parks you have? How many? I mean, you, you've got trails, you've got parks, we've got rings. I mean, we've got a whole menu of things so that nobody in Bismarck, man, they should be bored. No, I, I really truly believe that we uh, have something for everyone. If you want to get out and uh, be active, um, you know, there's stuff to do. And and uh, I'll mention a few things, but mm-hmm. I best the, be- the best approach is for people to go to our website at www.bizparks.org. But we are just under 3,000 acres of public parkland that we manage, uh, own, and maintain. Uh, in addition to that, we have one of our uh, most popular activities is, is walking, running, etc. And we have 75 plus miles of paved trail. And then we've had, we have another 20 miles of unpaved trail. So we're approaching 100 miles of trails uh, that people want or people use. Uh, we constantly hear that they want more. And, and as we plan with, in the new growth areas, we try to connect those neighborhoods to our community trail system. Uh, parks, overall parks, we have we have uh, about 54. Uh, playgrounds is another important area, and we do a great job providing inclusive-based playgrounds. Uh, we have 46 of those, horseshoe pits, um, youth soccer fields, adult, adult softball fields, uh, uh, three arenas, and we're working on uh, trying to get another, a fourth one or an additional arena built added on to Schaumburg Arena. Uh, hopefully that project starts next year. But we have a huge variety, and for for a municipal park district, we're very unique. We have uh, we have the traditional things that other municipal park districts may have, but in addition to that, things that you don't see in your normal municipal park districts would be things such as um, our you know the number of boat ramps that we maintain. We have five right now, and we're going to take on another four with the county parks agreement that I can talk about in a minute. But, you know, to have a horse arena in the middle of your community, to have an indoor archery facility along with three outdoor ranges, those types of things make us pretty unique. We also have a uh, the Francis Leach High Prairie Arts and Science Complex. Also, that provides opportunities for people, citizens with different interests, and that's what it's all about. And if you have little kids, they do do birthday parties there. Because I can yes, speak as, we a, do. as the parent of a five and a two year old, <laughs> I've been to my fair share of, uh, of birthday parties at the Hyper Science Center. Randy, you've got bosses, I've got bosses. Talk a little bit about the park board. I mean, because if you're watching Channel Two, I mean, certain nights you can you can see the replays of the park board meetings. But the park board really is. I mean, the park board meetings really are a good opportunity for citizens to get engaged and ask questions. I mean, just beyond the staff level, I mean, it's a pretty open meeting. I mean, format, but. I mean, talk about the park board and kind of what their duties are. Yes, you know, uh, we are governed by uh, five elected park commissioners. Um, you know, we have an election every two years, and uh, the next election for park board members will be in 2016, along with the other city, uh, city, county, and school elections. But uh, we have a, a park board that's elected, and uh, they're elected to, to manage the operations of the Bismarck Parks and Recreation District. And again, they are elected by the citizens of Bismarck. Uh, we have a very good park board. Um, you know, park board members are 
um, elected to establish policy and uh, to run the organization. Uh, they set the policy. Staff does the day-to-day operations. And, uh, you know, we have a, you know, I think we both understand our roles at this point. And, um, and the other thing with commissioners, it's a, it's a good opportunity for citizens to, uh, you know, citizens have a concern. You know, they can certainly uh, contact our office and visit with staff, but they're always, commissioners are always open to hear from uh, citizens too with, uh, to discuss things that maybe we're doing great and maybe some other things that we could do better. Right, you talk a little bit about, I, I think it goes without saying that the Bismarck Parks and Recreation Department is beholden and serves citizens of Bismarck. But you mentioned, you just mentioned now that there is an, there's a new agreement with the county for Parks and Rec to manage some county facilities as well. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, I, I'd like to talk about that. The, um, the Burley County Park Board and the Bismarck Board of Park Commissioners both approved here about a month ago, an agreement to uh, move forward starting in 2016, where Bismarck Parks and Recreation will manage uh, certain uh, facilities. And it's primarily four boat ramp areas that are in the county, along with Swenson Park and the Missouri Valley Complex. And this is really something that's been talked about for a while. The park district did uh, uh, was managing the Missouri Valley Complex um, about four years ago, well, back in 2005. It's been more than four years, I guess. But, uh, time flies. But, uh, right. but you know, we're excited about doing this. Uh, I think the County Park Board is excited and uh, we want to get moving. And uh, one of the first things we'll probably take a look at as we get into 2016 is, is, is uh, working with a consultant to um, uh, develop a master plan for the Missouri Valley Complex and maybe extend that master plan into the other areas that, that we are going to um, take care of. Randy, the Missouri Valley Complex, correct me if I'm wrong, most people probably know it as the fairgrounds, correct? Yes. Okay, so the fairgrounds were initially developed, I mean, everyone, I think everyone knows you've got Buckstop Junction out there, we've got the, I mean, you've got a racetrack, but what else, I mean, what else do you think could be done out there? I mean, what are, what are some of the things that you expect to, to, I mean, to hear back from the consultant? Well, I think, uh, you know, we have to, um, you know, select a consultant and then move forward. I think a big part of this process is to get input from the citizens, you mm. know, county citizens, city citizens, uh, to see what, what, what they want. Uh, you know, there has been, uh, you know, master plan was developed uh, a few years ago. You know, I think with the growth in our community and the diversity in our community, the thoughts, the needs, the wants are changing. So we, uh, you know, we have to remain open and uh, listen to what the people tell us and, and try to respond to that. But, you know, that particular piece of property, it's over 300 acres of public land that, you know, can be developed and can be enjoyed by by citizens more than it is today with the right plan. But, you know, it's, um, it's a natural area. Uh, you know, I think uh, things like more of a nature park uh, activities would really fit that area well. But again, I don't want to... Um, speak for the community. I'm, I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to listening to see what people want us to do out there. Randy, another issue that, not an issue, but a topic you and I have discussed in the past is Parks and Rec obviously works very well with the other public sector entities. I mean, you just talked about how you're working with the county, but I think another example I think most people are familiar with is how you work with Bismarck Public Schools in terms of facilities. I think most people assume that if, you know, if, if you're at Open Gym or something like that, you're on, you're on BPS property, but it's still Parks and Rec staff who's generally helping out. And then there's some other examples like that. Can you talk to me just a quick minute about how Parks and Rec works with BPS? Yes, the two entities have worked together for a number of years, and we have a joint powers agreement that was established in the early 1990s uh, with both entities. But we have a we're we have a number of programs that we use on school property, and then the school uses a number of park district programs. And uh, we feel we have a great relationship. Uh, as we move forward and with the growth in the programs and the needs for more facilities, planning is more important than ever. Well, and, that, and that, I think that goes without saying, and, and, but I'm glad Randy brought it up because I think citizens of Bismarck Mandan really expect that level of cooperation between whether it's Parks and Rec in the county or Parks and Rec in schools. I think people have come to expect that, and, to really, and it really helps make the most out of citizens tax dollars when you have those types of agreements and i think that's why people are so encouraged to hear that type of cooperation coming from coming from randy and parks one last thing here as i mentioned and randy mentioned earlier in his comments go to their website 
I mean, check it out because, again, you know, I'm looking at a lot of information with Randy right next to me. He's told our listeners about a lot of that information, a lot of the options, the activities. But there really is no reason for citizens in this community to be bored. I mean, there are tons and tons of things that you can find at their website. And, again, Randy, where do, where do they go for that? Go to the Park District website, www.bizparks.org. Sounds good. Well, with that, Producer Jim's giving me the nod. We're going to take you up from the break. We've got some more rock themed Christmas music coming back. Super Talk 1270. Currently, it's 16. News and views with Joel Heitkamp. Weekdays on Super Talk 1270. Well, I'm tempted just let the music play as Jim is giving me the nod, like start talking here, Brian. Just gonna let the music just let the music play. This is Bruce Springsteen, the E Street Band, as you can tell from the <laughs> saxophone. We're back here on the Dakota Housing Network, Super Talk 1270. My name is Brian Ritter. I'm your host. My guest today, Mr. Randy Bina from the Bismarck Parks and Recreation District. We spent the the last part of the half hour, Randy, if you can believe it or not, time flies, talking about Bismarck Mandan, what Parks and Rec is, you know, what they're up to. But we could probably spend a lot more than an hour talking about these things. But you've got some very exciting, very specific projects you guys are working on. And I think one that most people would recognize when you went driving around town is the expansion or the proposed expansion at the Schaumburg Ice Arena. Randy, I mean, take maybe a couple minutes and talk about Schaumburg, kind of the history, and then what the project aims to do. Certainly. Um, the additional ice sheet that we're planning at Schaumburg Arena really is the result of our 2013 facility study. Part of that study, we took at uh, took a look at uh, the need for additional ice in our community. Uh, they did. We completed an ice feasibility study, and Bismarck needs another sheet of ice right now. Uh, <laughs> as we grow, if, if if the growth continues, you know we're going to be needing another one to two sheets after we get the one done at Schaumburg, and you know, and probably in the next five to ten years. But uh, right now, what we're trying to do, we have a capital campaign committee. the The campaign is called Building on Tradition, and we have some individuals involved in raising some funds to uh, uh, partner with the Bismarck Parks and Recreation District to add a sheet of ice at Schaumburg, and this is going to be. Uh, uh, primarily a practice facility, but we'll have enough seating. Uh, the seating numbers will be very comparable to the current Schaumburg facility, uh, but we will have some games there. We have uh, currently at Schaumburg Arena, we host some games, um, high school games, boys and girls games mm-hmm. there, and uh, we look at hosting more games with the, the new addition. But uh, it's something that's needed, and we hope we can get this wrapped up so we can begin plans and start uh, our design process and, and hopefully construct in the near future. Well, Randy, you and I were talking before the show about just the growth of, we we'll call them ice sports, but in terms of whether it's figure skating, whether it's hockey, now with the added dynamic of being girls hockey, I mean, the Bismarck Blizzard's been very successful. There is, as you mentioned, an, just an increased demand, and that coupled with the overall growth of the community, you're right, we find ourselves short of ice, and in, as a result, you've got kids of all ages practicing very early in the morning, very late at night. So I've got to believe some of that is driving this I mean, this need for growth, I mean, driving this campaign. Yes, it is. You know, if you look at, um, you know, the need for additional ice, you know, you can take a look at what currently is happening. And we have young kids, um, hockey and figure skating, uh, skating early in the morning or late at night, and it's not the best situation. We'd like to reduce those uh early and late hours if we can. We'd also like to, with additional ice, provide additional opportunities for the general public, ice opportunities, whether it be additional public skating time, uh, startups and broomball leagues, a number of those things. And uh, right now, ice is so tight, it's so programmed, uh, we don't have any additional space to do some, uh, provide some other opportunities for the community. Now, let's talk about another growing sport along with the community. Uh, certainly baseball, softball, though, I mean, those those activities, and again, with the addition of girls' sports now and having fast pitch in Bismarck and Mandan, driving the need for more of those types of facilities. And a very recent project, Parks and Rec, that undertook was essentially a complete overhaul of Bismarck Municipal Baseball Diamond on South Washington Street. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yes, the Municipal Ballpark Project is a project that we are proud of. And again, it was a partnership 
effort with the Bismarck Baseball Boosters. Uh, and that process started with uh, the group came to the Bismarck uh, Board of Park Commissioners and the board approved uh, the concept of uh, developing a master plan for the park. And once that was developed and approved by the board, then we um, we initiated a capital campaign to raise some money. And, you know, the amount of money raised uh, for the project, the ballpark itself, not the parking lot, but, you know, the private funds, I think, paid for about 48% of that project and public funds uh, paid the balance of it. So it was a great private-public partnership. A couple of things the community has seen as a result of that renovation, number one, is we were able to bid on and receive the American Legion Central Plains Regional Baseball Tournament. And that's an event, again, that we had last uh, this year uh, in August, and uh, we are hosting it again in August of 2016. The other uh, uh, team uh, or the other result of this renovation, something we're excited about, is we're going to have Northwoods League Baseball in Bismarck, starting uh, Bismarck and Mandan, but it will be at the Municipal Ballpark starting in 2017. And the uh, park board and the, the league and uh, investment group, uh, it's called Bare Knuckle Baseball, uh, signed an agreement, and uh, again, they were in town just a couple weeks ago visiting, looking at our ballpark, and uh, I expect a press conference sometime in early of 2016 to talk about uh, where they're going from here. Now, Randy, and again, I don't mean to repeat what you just said, but you would say that that the resulting or bringing in a Northwoods League baseball team, which if, if most people, if listeners don't know, it's a it's a wood bat league. It's a high caliber NCAA college level talent that plays over the summer. It's, a, it's a somewhat of a short season. You've got teams in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Hopefully, adding on, you know now we'll add on North Dakota as well. But if it wasn't for the expansion at Muni, would you, I mean that the landing of the team would not happen? Is that safe to say? Yes, I I think that's correct. Um, you know when the board of park commissioners approved the master plan and. Um, Right after that hit the media and was being talked about, our office was contacted by about three or four different uh, leagues mm-hmm. that had an interest in starting baseball in Bismarck because of that. And then the Northwoods League has, has been in conversation with us for a couple of years, and they've been watching the progress of the project and once it was completed. <coughs> so uh, we finally came to an agreement and uh, look forward to it. I think it will be another neat activity uh, for the citizens of our community to go and watch some baseball. Now, speaking of summer activities, when it's much, much warmer than it is right now, one of the parks and recreation amenities that gets utilized very heavily are your pools. And, I mean, look at, we were talking again before the show. If you grew up like I did in Bismarck, Mandan, you know what hillside, you know the hillside park, you know the hillside pool, the big water slide. So you know what hillside's all about. But that was recently under. It was recently redone by Parks and Rec, and I think you've got some pretty staggering results as a result of that expansion or that result of that renovation. Yes, we're we're very pleased with the end product, and again, uh, it this really it was the result of our 2013 facility study. But uh, Hillside Pool on Lions Park, uh, the pool was over 60 years old, and we went in and we totally replaced the aquatic portion of it. And then we gutted the uh, bathhouse, and now it's the facility side is a very nice facility, a community use facility that's open 12 months out of the year, and it's been u- being used by the public for a number of different <coughs> rental opportunities. But the aquatic side, um, just just amazing. The numbers this year uh, were were just we're very very pleased. I'm not <laughs> sure how else to put it, but if you look at the numbers. Compared to 2014, the old design, we had 8,800 for our daily attendance, and we tripled that number this year. We had over 32,000 people for swimming that went through the doors in 2015. So a great positive result. Um, We look forward to 2016. Now, Randy, that's the second pool that Parks and Rec has recently taken through an extensive renovation. Uh, Again, as as a parent to two little girls, you know, the El- and someone who grew up here, the Elks Pool has been, I mean, probably the oldest pool in, Bis- in, in Bismarck. And that was also recently redone by Bismarck Parks and Recreation. Yes, it was. And I remember going through that process. And that's really been a nice addition to our community. And I forget the exact year we, that we opened that. But uh, that was necessary. And, you know, if you look at our existing strategic plan, one of the things, uh, one of the focus areas in our plan is to really take a look at um uh, our existing system and continue to enhance and update that system along with growing uh, with the community. 
I don't imagine pools are a real easy business to be in, especially in Bismarck, North Dakota, given the weather. But one one amenity, one other amenity that Parks and Rec is responsible for that is utilized all year round are the walking trails. And I know that you take calls about this all the time. Um, I live in a neighborhood where I'm very fortunate to have the walking trail right next to my house. But the walking trails really are a part of Bismarck. I mean, they really are part of our community. But I suspect, given our past conversations, it's something that you still get asked a lot for more trails, more miles. I want it next to my house. I want to keep going. Talk a little bit about the walking trails, Randy. Yes, you know, the uh, we call them shared use path trails, and they're one of the most um, – wanted activities <laughs> or facilities that we have it's in a our luxury, system. Randy. Yes. And, uh, you know, we continue to uh, try to develop new trails um, in the growth areas. Uh, the last couple of years, we, we constructed trails uh, in northeast Bismarck and uh, would be um, north of Century and um, by Pebble Creek Golf Course. We, uh, we had a section about 1.3 miles that went from Century to 43rd. And this year we completed a segment that went from Calgary to Centennial and it goes right by the new high school, Legacy High School. So we're, we're very pleased with that and that trail is used by that community. And I think as those road systems expand, uh, Centennial and 43rd, we're going to have a loop around that neighborhood of about six miles. So it's really gonna be a nice future improvement. Now, Randy, we talked earlier in the set, in the show about how be, how Parks and Rec works with other public sector entities, but when it comes to when it comes to the shared use paths, the walking trails, you also work with some of the developers, some of the housing developers in our community to put those trails into their new neighborhoods. Uh, talk about a little bit more about how that comes to be, how they, I mean, how they approach you, and how the cooperation works. Yes, you know, uh, partnerships and working together is what it's all about. And I think mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier that um, due to the growth in our community, I think uh, planning is more critical than ever. And the planning between the uh, government entities along with the uh, private sector. And uh, we work with the developers and, you know, we have a green space policy that we're trying to work through with developers to build some neighborhood parks in, in, in the growth areas. And, uh, you know, trails is one thing that, you know, developers know that uh, when people move in they want uh, the new residents want to be connected well, that's the to the they want to put in your yeah, yeah want that's to be connected hook. to the trail system so uh you know we, we plan and, and try to do it the best we can we're uh, funding always can be a bit of an issue and uh, we're always seeking grants uh, applying for grants uh, there's a couple grant programs that primarily fund trails so we put in and we we've been very um, successful in getting some money for that well, and certainly those trails help do help promote a very healthy, very active lifestyle in Bismarck in, in the city of Bismarck. And I can tell you, it isn't all use. It isn't all seasons activity because you know obviously we've had six inches of snow in the last few days. That trail wasn't even cleaned off yet. It hadn't stopped snowing yet, Randy. And there were people that had to get out, that had to use it. They were walking by. I wish they would have picked up a shovel while they were doing it. Could have helped out the neighborhood. But it is a, it is an amenity that, like you said earlier. Developers seek. It's an amenity that people that home buyers seek. And so it's a very welcome addition to Bismarck. So with that, we're gonna come back here for the last segment on Super Talk 1270 and talk about the future of Parks and Rec. Currently it's 14. Bobcat hockey action with Paul Teeple and the call on Super Talk 1270. I don't have my glasses on here, Jim, but I'm going to assume that's the Beatles singing. <laughs> We're back here on Super Talk 1270, the Dakota Housing Network. I am your host, Brian Ritter, with the Bismarck Mandan Development Association. My guest today for our last segment of the hour is Mr. Randy Bina. He is the executive director of the Bismarck Parks and Recreation District. And for this last segment, Randy, like we talked about, certainly the community is growing, and Parks and Rec's offerings are growing right along with it. But what does is, what is the future look like for Parks and Rec? What are, the, what are the initiatives, what are the projects, what are the issues that you see yourselves working on going forward here these next two, three years? Well, we need to uh, continue to listen and respond to the community. And uh, that starts with uh, continued planning and our strategic plan. We have a three-year strategic plan that uh, is, a, is a rolling plan. So every year uh, we, we add a year and take a year off. And 
starting here in January, we'll be taking a look and, and working on our 2016 to 18 plan. But starting in February and March, uh, the board and staff will start planning for our 2017 to 19 strategic plan. And that is built based on feedback that we receive throughout the year from our citizens through our website, through discussions with partnership groups, uh, through discussions with uh, other government entities. You know, it's, it's a team effort uh, that keeps us moving forward. So when you look at the 2016 to 2018 plan, Randy, the, the goals, what are your goals really centered around? I mean, are, is there any one particular issue? Is there any one particular segment that you really see this being the focal point of the plan? Well, you know, we take, uh, we use our vision, our mission statement, our core purpose, and our core values as really is what guides us as we move forward. And then we have four goals. But along with the goals, we, I've identif- we've identified four focus areas. And the focus areas are similar to what we have this year. But uh, number one area that we're hearing from the community is we need to keep pace with the growth. And that's... Um, you know, growing our system um, in the areas that are growing with the community. But another thing that keeps coming up is we need to enhance and update our current system. So we're trying to do that. Staffing continues to be something that we need to take a look at as we move forward. Our staffing needs, our skill sets are changing. Uh, and, um, you know, the number of people that we need, uh, that continues to grow as our system grows. Um, we need to remain competitive, uh, you know, in our salary and benefits package, those types of things. Existing infrastructure, I talked about that a bit, but that is really something, you know, we have a beautiful parks and recreation system right now. And uh, some of the areas need some tender, loving care. They need some, some updates. So we have to work that in. Uh, and we also have to be open as we move forward to any emerging topics that may come up. We have to be prepared for those. So, uh, you know, it's really planning as a big part of it. Randy, when, when citizens are calling you and they're coming to you and your staff to talk about the services, the facilities, the amenities that you're responsible for, what, what are those hot topics right now? What are those things that people are calling you with? We talked about the shared youth pathways previously. We've talked about hockey. Are those the big picture issues? Are those the things that people are coming with you about? Or is there something else that we haven't talked about? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's um, it's kind of all of, the, all of the above. We really have a diversified system. We have a diversified population that has a mm-hmm. wide variety of interests. Uh, some of the hotter things, newer trends, I would call it. Pickleball is an area that with the seniors is getting popular. And we just, this year with one of our neighborhood parks, Johnny Giese Memorial Park, we uh, built... In that park, we included two pickleball courts. But, you know, people like to see green space. Uh, It doesn't necessarily all, the green space doesn't have to be fully developed and fully programmed. They just want some space to uh, recreate, uh, you know, uh, physical health, mental health, all of that is good. Um, You know, I think on uh, on the program side, the aquatic side, you know, there's, Probably a need to look at some additional facilities, neighborhood-based facilities up north. Uh, We've been hearing uh, splash parks in some neighborhood parks is something that we probably need to take a look at. Um, You know, and if you look at our 2013 facility study, one of the big needs was uh, the Capital Rocket and Fitness Center as a facility. As we grow, we may be we need to decide what we're going to do with that, and you know, replacement is definitely an option somewhere. Uh, four indoor tennis courts is probably, it's not enough anymore. We need a couple more. So those are just a few of the things, but, um, you know, there's, uh, the, the trick is to try to balance it, balance all of it. Cause you have to invest in the growth areas, but we also have to keep investing in our system. Randy, I'm not convinced that you're not lying to me and you just made pickleball up on the spot, but we're just, you know, we're going to assume that for the moment that you're telling the truth and, and move on from that. Could I play pickleball inside the World War Memorial Building? Because, you know, that's one of those things when people talk about, especially with the downtown like Bismarck has right now, and it's such a vibrant downtown, and you've got a facility that has been a part of this community for so long. Uh, Talk about the future of the World War Memorial Building, because I know you guys have made some new investments there. Yes, we have. That that was part of the 2013 facility study I've mentioned a couple times here uh, today, but uh, we put in a new wood floor. We put in a new floor in the basement. We continue to upgrade that upgrade that facility. We're trying to make some upgrades on an annual basis. But yes, activities like pickleball could be played on those courts. Uh, you, you know, pickleball, believe it or not, they say is um, is the number one growing sport for seniors in the country. And we have a league. 
Uh, they are playing in, a, indoors at the Capitol Rocket and Fitness Center in the wintertime, but we have some people that get together and play at North Central Park tennis courts, outside courts, uh, in the summertime. Wow. There's a pickleball league, folks. You heard it here first from Randy with the Parks and Rec. Now, you know, we've talked about, you know, we talked about walking drills with some of these other facilities. You know, parks, I mean, it's right in the name. And, and when we talk about developers and new neighborhoods, everyone wants a park in their neighborhood. Everyone wants a park right outside their door. But when it comes to working with the community and working with developers, is there a process by which Parks and Rec goes through to determine you know, where a park, where a pocket park's going to? Is there a partnership that generally goes into where you're going to put a neighborhood park? Because, again, that those are things that people look in terms of how do we maintain that quality of life, that quality of place. And you and I talk about this all the time. But but how does I mean how does that process work for our listeners? We uh, we have developed our staff has done a great job and uh, we have developed some search areas in our in our mm-hmm. community and we've identified neighborhood neighborhood parks we would like uh, people to be able to walk be within one half mile walking distance of neighborhood parks. So based on that, we've developed some areas that we think neighborhood parks should grow should go. In addition, district or regional parks, which we like to look at maybe 25 acres or more, uh, we would like those parks uh, be to be within two miles of, of residents. So we have some areas that are identified, and as new developments are happening, we are at the table talking to developers, and, uh, you know, it's going pretty good. It, it, it's, it's kind of a slow process, but it's, it's something as you plan. Uh, you need to identify the land. You need to secure the land, and then the development comes later. Because, uh, but it's really important to plan for that park at the very beginning. And then, Randy, maybe lastly we can talk about really the importance of user groups and how Parks and Rec works with user groups because, well, for example, I – play softball during the summer not well but I play softball and the Bismarck Mandan uh, Men's Soul Pitch Association has worked very well with Parks and Rec over the last few years to add on diamonds down at Cottonwood replace some uh, roofs shelters things like that there have got to be I mean there have to be dozens of user groups that Parks and Rec work with but certainly they're a player in terms of how we develop facilities and how you uh, add on to those amenities yes it would it would be difficult to um provide the system that we have without the support of partner groups and you know it 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 ranges from service club groups to uh the sport association groups Uh, we've got a very active group uh, right now with the community gardens we continue to expand community gardens which is a popular thing and probably something as we you know talk about the future i can see more community gardens but uh you know we uh yeah, I can't say thanks enough to all the groups that that help uh, Bismarck Parks and Recreation District. In fact, we looked at um, some of our projects over the last five years, and 56% of the capital improvement projects that we work on are with a partner. So very seldom do we move any projects uh, forward without the help of someone else. Now, it, you know, we're, we're coming to the close of the show here, but I do want to I do want to make a, a quick note. Uh, when I called Randy a couple weeks ago or emailed him to see if he wanted to do the show with me, I'm sure he thought, well, what, is, what does Parks and Rec have to do with you know, business and Bismarck and Mandy? Why does he want me in the show? I think it's important for the listeners to realize that as we're, as we're out trying to promote Bismarck and as a place to do business, and now that we have 3,000 open jobs, try to promote Bismarck and as a really a destination, a place where people want to, to come and make their home and hopefully fill some of those open jobs, it is critically important that we keep that quality of life and that quality of place that Parks and Recreation really helps to offer and helps to create here. And that's why those efforts, and that's why Randy being here today is so important, to talk about those efforts, to talk about what they're doing, because really we're competing on a, on a much larger scale now than we ever have in the past for for business, for people. And to have the level of service that Parks and Rec provides, Randy, is really a compliment to the city. So I want to thank you and the parks and, and all your staff and your board for everything you do for Bismarck Mandan. It's very much appreciated. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, It's been a great year. Uh, we have a great team uh, starting, you know, it starts with community support, uh, the park board, the staff, uh, a number of people. And I would just like to conc- uh, close by saying, you know, uh, happy holidays to uh, everyone that's listening today. Boy, San- he, he doubles as a Santa, folks. Well, I want to thank everyone for listening to again today on the Dakota Housing Network here on Super Talk 1270. Again, we will be here the third Thursday of every month. Uh, we'll be hosting, talking about all things happening in Bismarck Mandan. So with that, as Randy said, Merry Christmas, everyone.